the journey to Office 365. Um, when we talk about document management, I think there's so many companies that have a multitude of questions as to how do they take their documentation, how do they manage their files, and how do they manage their organizational content as a whole um, within the cloud. And that's where SharePoint really answers many of those questions. And a good place to start with SharePoint is really around documents. But as you'll see from today, um, SharePoint is more than just document management. It's really an information management solution where you can actually uh, consolidate and store all of your company information in one place, making it easy to search for, easy to find, easy, easy to reference, um, easy to use if you've got a business process that you actually want to include all this information in going down the, down the line. Uh, makes it easier when it comes to reporting because all your information is stored in one place. So SharePoint really becomes an important hub for a lot of other services that really spin off, off of this. And that's why SharePoint in many, many cases in terms of Office 365 is really seen as the foundation of Office 365. So I'll start our presentation, but at least keep that in mind. And when we go through the demo and when we go through the training, um, you know, hopefully these things will, will really start to tie together. Okay. Okay, so a few things at a high level that we're going to look at. I first want to start off by focusing on what is SharePoint? Um, what does it mean to the organization? And really on a, on a high level, how can you get value from it? We'll then look at file management in the cloud. And as I mentioned, SharePoint, a core component of SharePoint is file management. It's not only about file management, it's really information management as a whole, but file management is a really important part, um, especially to businesses where they're thinking, okay, I've got a lot of company files that are stored in different places, either on a file server or in different cloud solutions. How can we bring them together? And how can we make sure that our users only have access to the content that they should have? So permissions management, uh, group management, all those kinds of things uh, come into the come into the picture as well. Um, and you may think that that makes it really, really complex. And I can understand why. If any of you on this call uh, have, let's say, played around with or looked at SharePoint in the past, I would completely agree. I think SharePoint uh, burned many people in the sense that um, it was very complex to deploy because of its permissions management and structure. But Microsoft has fundamentally changed that and improved that greatly over the past few years, and made that process far easier for you to really adopt um, true file management in the cloud. Okay, so next question is why OneDrive and SharePoint? So why, why are there two split solutions? So why do we have OneDrive and SharePoint? And how does Delve help to bring them together? So I want to create some context between my, why Microsoft has got two different applications that do, or two different services that do file management in the cloud. Um, Eric, I just want to interrupt you there for a second, and just to make sure, um, if you are meaning to share your screen, uh, we're not seeing it. Um, if you have, if you haven't, I'm not too sure. Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much, Daniel. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay, um, I'll also be looking at accessing um, accessing my files via Windows or via SharePoint. So how can I work with my files at the fourth, uh, fourth point over here? Um, can I access my files in a more typical manner by using a Windows File Explorer, something that I'm used to? And the answer is yes. Um, and I can, in addition to that, also access my content in the SharePoint website. And we'll talk about why SharePoint is designed around uh, a website type architecture instead of, uh, you know, uh, a file structure because directory structures are, qu are quite hard to navigate. So we'll talk about why Microsoft went the route of actually having a site structure versus a, a file structure in SharePoint. We'll then look at version history, co-authoring and how you can keep in control of your content as an organization. Uh, we'll talk about the desktop and mobile experience. So how does, how does uh, uh, SharePoint work in, in Windows. Um, I'll talk about it in Mac as well, and then I'll talk about the mobile experience as well. And then uh, finally, I want to end off with some of the corporate governance controls you have with the Microsoft Security and Compliance Center. Uh, in the last session we had about two weeks ago, I really 
took quite a deep dive into the security and compliance center and we focused a lot on advanced threat protection. So ATP or Microsoft ATP as they like to use the acronyms. And we talked about security and, and compliance um, through the security and compliance center. And these corporate governance, governance controls are crucial to organizations that move their company documents into the cloud because without those controls, you're at a loss as to who's got access to the content, um, who shared it, who the content is shared with, when it was accessed, all of those kinds of things. You need those controls in place so that you can maintain compliance, uh, whether it's regulatory compliance, as in um, Poppy or GDPR with your clients, or whether it's the security. Uh, you want to make sure that there's no um, mal use of your content internally, so you want to be able to track and control it. So having those controls are crucial that sit on, on top of SharePoint. Okay. So SharePoint Online, if I, if I touch on the Office 365 periodic table, or well, the periodic table of Office 365, as I had mentioned it in the very first session that we had, um, about a month ago. SharePoint Online, OneDrive for Business and Delp. Those three services over here at the, on the left hand side really form part of Microsoft's file storage and collaboration um, service or su suite of solutions. Um, and there's a reason that Microsoft splits both SharePoint and OneDrive and I'll talk to those uh, shortly. Okay, so so these are really the solutions. We've got SharePoint, OneDrive, and Delve that make up file storage and, and collaboration. Okay, so firstly, what is SharePoint? Now, SharePoint is a intranet solution. So um, I'm sure you've heard the, ter the term probably um, stated, you know, uh, or you've, you've heard the term before, an intranet, and you're probably wondering what an intranet really is. Now, an intranet is really just a, net, a network that really connects all your internal content together in one place. That's really the fundamental idea of an intranet. And SharePoint is really there to try and, try and help you achieve that. So by bringing together um, contacts lists, it could be uh, calendars, it could be documents, it could be um, tables of data, raw data, um, it could be website pages, it could be links to external pages. All of that content can be surfaced in one place, thereby helping your users to navigate um, through all of this content because they get the ability to search and find the content in one place where you could actually structure this according to exactly how your organization works. Okay, so when I go through the demo, I've got a scenario that I'll really go through where We've got a, sh um, a SharePoint homepage and how the navigation structure works off the SharePoint homepage. So how you could access doc documents off that homepage, how you could access events, how you could access reports, all from it, all from uh, within one point in your in your organization. So that's really what SharePoint is there to provide you with. Now, as I said, Microsoft's got two two solutions that handle um, document management or file management, and that's both SharePoint and OneDrive. Now, many of you may well be aware of using OneDrive, um, and you may, you may be quite familiar with it, and you've probably used it quite a lot, but you probably have not touched SharePoint too much. And I think the reason is, is, um, is really because SharePoint needs to be set up for you. It needs to be designed, it needs to be built according to your organization specifications and how you want to facilitate the consolidation of all your internal content. So there's there's a bit of a um, there's some workshopping and some um, meet there's some um, engagement that we as solid systems we need to do to actually assist you to bring all this um, organizational content into one space and help to facilitate the navigation to that content. Okay, but SharePoint and OneDrive really sit um, side by side in terms of file management. SharePoint is there to store your company content. So this is content that is shared by default 
with certain people or teams of people or departments of people or the entire organization. So this content is shared by default, the content in SharePoint. Okay. Then we've got OneDrive. Now on the same token, OneDrive is also about documents, but documents in OneDrive are private by default unless you share. Okay, so where SharePoint, from a company perspective, you wanna be able to share content from the top down with your organization and you wanna share it by default, OneDrive goes the other way around. We've got content that belongs to us as individuals. I mean, it's content that we generate for the company, so it belongs to the company, but it's, generate that it's, comp it's documentation that we generate ourselves that doesn't necessarily need to be shared. If it needs to be shared, we can just move it into SharePoint. Um, but we generate it ourselves. We store it in our OneDrive because it's going to be private. That content is private by default. And then we can move it into SharePoint if we need it to be shared with our team. So that's where Microsoft has split the approach. One being shared by default and the other one, which is really a private file storage solution, which is OneDrive. Okay. Um, and the reason that Microsoft's really done that is, is because they know that individuals and organizations have different, different requirements for file management. Companies need to govern and structure content in a certain way so that they can um, make so that they can ensure that it is compliant and secure um, and accessible by the right people via permissions. And then we ourselves, when we're generating this content within the organization, we want to have a place where we can store it so that we can work anyway on this content. And so uh, for us as individuals, we, we need a separate con um, we need a separate space to store our own content before maybe it's ready to share. OK, so that's kind of how, how I use it. And I'll, when we go through the scenario itself, uh, I'll show you specifically how that can be done. OK, so let's dive straight into the demo. And I'll take you through a scenario that I have specific, specifically put um, together for this. Um, Eric, okay. I don't know if you can see because I don't know what you're sharing, but there's the solid webinar um, icon in the top on the right end of the screen. You want to maybe minimize that just so we can see. There we go. OK, yeah, it should have um, it should it shouldn't be in the presentation anymore. You should be seeing my web browser at the moment. OK. So, so here I am on the Office 365 um, online portal. So you would have remembered from the very first session that we did a month ago, um, I really spoke about accessing this portal through a really easy to remember website, and that's office.com. And through this web portal, you will be able to access all of the content that, and all of the applications that your organization has made available to you through Office 365. So immediately when I log in here online, I get access to the Outlook online app. Most of us would prefer using the Outlook desktop app like I've got here down at the bottom. And I'd agree, use the Office desktop app, but the flexibility to be able to use both so that even if I'm at a device where I don't necessarily have access to a desktop app and I just want to log in, um, like I'm overseas and I just want to log into office.com and check, I've got access to all of my content and all of my apps that I need to use right through this portal. Okay, so we're going to focus on SharePoint today and I've already pre-launched it in this tab over here. Now, now what I'm going to do is I've created these two sites. Now, when it comes to SharePoint, um, thinking of how to, how to put this in, um, a specific way. So in SharePoint, it's all about um, bringing content together and making sure that all your content can easily be found by your users within your organization. So instead of them having to go through to a file server and having to navigate through 10 different subfolders to find a document, they can navigate through a visual, a visual website, a website which you can actually design and structure yourself. And because it's a website driven, I mean, all of us are very familiar with um, navigating around content on a website. It becomes more familiar to us. Um, and because it's more familiar to us, it becomes easier to navigate and it becomes more, um, more engaging. 
because the organization can engage with us uh, in terms of that content and we can engage engage with the organization in terms of that content by sending messages adding comment comments all of that kind of thing so we're just taking file management where it is historically on a file server and bringing it a level up so we can have it in inside um, an intranet now the first thing you need to do when you when you in sharepoint is you need to create the site structure now, unfortunately, in terms of the webinar, there's definitely no not enough time for us to go through how we create and design all of these sites and structure the content. But what I do want to um, just highlight for you is the fact that Microsoft has two different types of sites. And just to paint the picture for you, think of how a, a normal website works. So if you want to you want to generate a website for your own company, you would have a home page. And you could think of the home page like a communication site. This is where you want to communicate your message to your clients. Um, in this case, because it's an intranet, you want to communicate your content to your internal users. So this is about communicating content. So you can create a communication site which has things like events going on in your organization, featured tiles, um, links to like specific content that they need to see some news articles that you found that you really want to publish to the organization. Um, things like a, a document that needs to be shared across the entire organization. A communication site helps to communicate that content to a broad audience. Then the other type of site is a team site. Now a team site, similar to a communication site, but this one is centered around a particular department or team. So here, here is a department like HR that needs to engage with each other. There are a group of people that work in the same department, they have similar kind of roles, and they have weekly meetings. They also have news that they want to post. They also share documents, and they have conversations with the team. So you've got a communication site that really helps to um, engage the entire organization and share this content to a broad uh, group of people. And then team sites help to bring uh, that content and focus it towards a specific team. And we can, so we could navigate between a communication site to a team site quite easily. And this is with a scenario that I'm going to show you now. So I've pre-set up already two sites, uh, a solid systems webinar page, which is our home page. And then from our home page, I'm going to show you how we can navigate to some of our teams themselves. OK, so we've got this solid systems homepage where it's great. We put a logo there. We've got some links here to some things that are important and we can edit those so we can add other links that might be important along the top panel over here. But we've got home so everybody can always get back to this homepage so they can see what's going on and we can feature content that needs to be shared across the entire organization. We've got a very easily accessible way to get to documents. We've got our teams so that people can navigate to their departments. If your organization is a little bit bigger, then you might want to structure this as in regions. Um, so a lot of the SharePoint development that I personally do is really about, you, might, you may well have a structure at the top here being regions where you have Western Cape, Eastern Cape, uh, KZN, Gauteng, and then people go to the different regions and inside the regional communication site, you have the teams. So you so you might have this, you might have another site that sort of looks like the solid system site, but just Western Cape focused. Um, and that's quite a nice way to then engage. You, you're really focusing communication to the Western Cape. So this, this content will be focused towards the entire solid systems. We'll be able to access and view this content. And then you can navigate down one level of structure to region and have focused content around just the Western Cape. And then within the Western Cape, you could have HR, finance and sales based on the, the departments that are within those offices. So that's a, that's a way in terms of just speaking about the SharePoint um, structure and how you would actually structure these sites so that people can navigate to them. Okay, but I've created a very simplistic structure here. Um, and I've done a little bit of tweaking in terms of the design and the look and feel on this site. So if we go to our documents here, 
this is going to take us to our documents library, um, which will, will be accessible by various people within Solid Systems. Now, I don't have any documents here at the moment, but if I did, um, I could go and upload existing content here that I want to share with the entire uh, company, or I can create new content directly by using these um, quick links. So this menu here, by giving the ability to create folders as well as different files, allows me to create that structure and have those documents. But you, may, you may be asking yourself, okay, but if I always have to work through a website like this, well, that doesn't really help me to, um, to really work while I don't have an internet connection, because what if, what if I need to access this content while I'm on an airplane and be able to work on it? Well, that's where really sync comes in. So any of these document, um, any of these document areas, what Microsoft calls document libraries, um, and the reason they call them libraries is just like in the, just like in libraries that we have uh, nowadays, where we have books stored by their genre. Uh, similarly, you may well want to store documents in these particular libraries. So what it really helps you to do is coordinate how these documents are stored instead of using like subfolders and subfolders and subfolders you could actually store documents and then specify um, you know a specific thing like this document is uh, related to this client so you could actually have a choice and this choice column could be client and then we choose you know client um, this is microsoft google and what happens is when we store when we store documents here, we could specify this document is related to this client by just identifying this document is related to this client. Instead of having all these subfolders, it then allows us to then filter. We can filter these documents by um, a particular client and see the documents be by client. So it, it creates this unique um, ability for us to far easier find content and documents which are relevant to specific uh, metadata that we can add. That's what um, Microsoft calls. Well, that's what SharePoint refers to as metadata. So what I've done is, let's not focus on this documents, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you down one level. Let's go, let's go to HR itself. So I click on the HR site. Now HR gets their own portal. And there would be a couple of members that are part of this team. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how, in terms of the SharePoint structure, how we would go and add people to HR. Because so I just wanted to, so I'm going to just add Daniel to HR here so that we can both have access to this content. So I just type Daniel in the name and you can see I'm the owner of HR. Daniel can be a member, but I can always upgrade him to an owner as well. Now, the difference between an owner and a member essentially is really just um, owners are able to choose who can have access to the sites. They control membership and who has access to the content within the HR team. If it's a finance team, it's just as important. You may well have financial documents stored there, but you only want these particular people um, as, as members who have access to the financial document. Likewise, only these two people, myself and Daniel, have access to the HR content. Now, because I've made Daniel an owner as well, he can go and add other people. So just li likewise, I could add other people to this. So we're both owners. We can go and include uh, other people and remove people from this group if we want to. Um, if I downgraded him back to a member, he's only a member here. He doesn't have any ability to add new people, remove people, that kind of thing. He just has, has access to the content here. Okay, so that's really membership. So now the two of us have access to the site. And on this site, just like we had on the, <clears throat> on the homepage, we've got the ability to um, showcase information. So we could have news that we can update the HR team about. Um, we can see the activity. So what documents have been added? So here's some documents that were added by me a few minutes ago. It's about half an hour ago. 
Um, here's a list of all the documents that we can go and look at and actually work on. And then here's some quick links where we can get to our um, Sage VIP. So if we need to get to Sage VIP, <clears throat> we've really just added quick access to it, takes us directly to our payroll system, and immediately we've got that link there. Could also, we also got a quick link to Google if we want to navigate from our HR site to Google. So these quick links really I think you're getting a sense of how it allows you to bring all this content all into one place. I mean, we could add other elements here. I'll just show you a list of other elements we could add onto SharePoint here. By clicking on this little plus, we get the ability here to add all these other elements to the site that might be relevant to us in HR. We can add links, we can add images, we can add maps, we can add an image gallery. Maybe we want to showcase some images that we took from a recent um, a trip or recent event that we held for the company. Uh, we might want to create another document library. So to store maybe templates. So we've got a document library called documents here on the left hand side. We might want a different one where we're going to store all of our templates. OK, we want maybe we have a list of data. This could be a contacts list. We could have a contacts list shown here. Um, we could even have Twitter. You can see some third party applications even can be added onto our site as well. So these are all things that can be added to, to the site to really showcase and consolidate this information directly here. This countdown timer is new, so you could have a countdown timer to a specific um, event. So add a description, maybe this is count down to our um, new HR um, system. And then we would we can specify um, the date and time, whether it must count up or count down, and then what's the call to action. So once this is actually, actually, uh, let's say, counted down, what's the action it's going to point people towards? Access our new HR system here, or you know, here's our new branding content if we're in marketing, or here's our new sales, um, here's our new sales portal, or something like that. You know, this countdown type of time could be used for that. But we can add all of these kinds of elements. And um, a lot of clients actually use the ability to embed. So we could embed like, well, it's embedding YouTube videos. We could embed other things off other websites directly into our page here to bring that into one place. OK, so that's how we're bringing everything together in one place. But let's look at, uh, at documents in particular. So if I go to my documents library, Here's, all, here's some of the documents that I want to work, that I've uploaded, um, and here's some. Here's where I get to sync it, because I want it actually accessible on Windows. I don't want to have to, if I want to look at the applic applicant list in HR, I don't want to have to open it online and then have a look, well, who's, who's applied to join our organization? Oh, here's the list. You know, but I always have to do this through a web website, which is not bad, um, but maybe I prefer the experience via Windows Explorer. So we're going to have a look at that right now. So all I have to do is click sync. OK, that's all. And it then connects it onto my PC. Now what we'll see here is I've got OneDrive linked and then I get this other folder. Um, which is really the company name. Solid System has got a little company cloud next to it. And I've got two folders. Solid Systems Documents, which is linked. If I put them side by side to my home page. So let's go to the home page. Here's the home page. And if I go to my documents now. OK, so the documents on the home page would link back to the documents over here. OK, so that's like for like. Um, let's just link those again. So if I create a new document here, let's say in Solid Systems documents, you're going to see how this is going to synchronize up. So I'm going to create a new Word document called um, New Sales Template. Okay. And you're going to see it got created there on the left hand side. I don't have to do anything. Now, since I've renamed it, this side will get renamed as well. I might just have to refresh this page. Okay, no, I didn't. It just So there we go. New Sales Template created a few seconds ago by me right there. If I delete it over here on this side, it's going to synchronize up and it's going to delete, get deleted. You'll see it get removed out of there in a few seconds as well. And there we go, it's gone. 
Okay, so we've got the synchronized approach between the two, which allows us on our Windows PC as well as our Mac now to actually work against these directly um, in a more familiar way through Windows Explorer and through the applications that we actually have installed here in Windows. Okay, so I'm going to go back to HR. So if we look at our HR documents, we've got these five documents over here. Appli applicant list, paralegal job description, policy doc, um, positions available and recruit recruiting proposal, essentially. And there are those five there. Now, if I, if I were to go and let's say open our, let's say I'm going to create a new document. Okay, so I'm going to go to Excel. I'm not going to go directly there. But I'm going to create a new blank workbook and I'm going to say that these are our. I'm going to save this document where do I want to save it. I'm going to say more save options and we're going to go and browse. We should always go and browse and we're going to browse to where we had synced. So I'm going to save this in HR and I want to save this as um, this is our. Updated um, it's our intern. Our intern list. Our updated intern list. Okay, we're going to save that. This is going to save directly to SharePoint, and we'll see that get um, stored over here shortly. So it's just busy saving, and in a couple of seconds we'll see that document appear over here. There we go. Okay, so we've got updated intern list created a few seconds ago by myself, and here I have it open, and I can go and create it. But what I want to do is I want to live go and get Daniel's assistance in this. He's also in the HR department and he's going to actually co-author uh, co this document with me. I've just created it and saved it in HR, but I actually want him to input the content with me in this. So what I'm going to do before I, I save it, I'm going to actually put in some columns here. So I need name, surname, um, and let's say um, cell phone. So we've got these columns. Um, let's actually make them a little bit more, give them a bit more space. And I'm going to add some names here. So I'm going to add my own name here, Eric Bauer. Just a random someone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> a random cell phone number. Okay. And this I want to specify as text. Okay, and then I'm going to go and share this with Daniel because so I want to get Daniel's Daniel's feedback on this. So I've said specify people you specify here can edit. Perfect. I'm going to send this to Daniel. I'm going to say hi, Daniel. Please need your help with updating. send it. This is going to send Daniel an email and he's going to be able to come in here and also open the document and start working with me. So I'm going to start including some other other details. Uh, Kyle, let's say uh, Davis, we'll just have another number. Okay. So there we go, Daniel's just joined. So he's in cell A1, I can see that there. And you can see he's highlighted in blue. Now, Daniel, if you wouldn't mind going and just typing in the fourth row for me. Um, no problem. No problem. And you can type some details there, perfect. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay, so here we can actually co-author and collaborate on this content. And if I go out to this document now, we can see that this document is updated and synced. So it's going to stay on sync because Daniel's currently in the document. So it's just going to keep telling me that, okay, this document is still being synchronized because there's actually somebody working on it. But as soon as Daniel dis um, goes off the document, sorry, Daniel, if you wouldn't mind just closing uh, on your side as well. I have closed now. Okay, cool. We'll see that go to a green tick. And then what we'll notice is if we go and open this content again, okay, 
autosave automatically gets put on because it's SharePoint content. We've still got that content that, uh, um, that Daniel added. And that content is automatically updated in SharePoint. So anybody else who maybe goes to SharePoint in the website and goes and opens this updated intern list has got the same data view that was just captured by myself and Daniel uh, live when we did the co-authoring. Okay, and I'm sure you saw there that, I mean, I can co-author regardless of whether I'd opened this document in the web browser like this, or whether I'd opened it via Excel on my actual desktop PC or my Mac. Um, I can actually go and, I can actually go and uh, co-author. So the co-authoring applies on both sides. I don't need to be only in the web interface, um, which Google Apps for Business forces you to. So if you have Google Apps, you can't use um, Excel itself to co-author, obviously, because it's not a, a Microsoft app. But here within Office 365, you could use the desktop version of Excel or the web version of Excel to co-author. Same thing applies for PowerPoint, same thing applies for Word, um, as well as OneNote. So if you want to take notes together, you want to do word processing together, you want to do spreadsheets together, you want to do presentations together, any of those applications all support co-authoring and up to 15 people at the same time can be on that document and working. Um, they can be in different uh, tabs, doesn't matter. So anywhere within this document, those people can be. If you ever need to find where they are, they'll all be listed here at the top and I can go and click and I can go and see where those people are working. It'll actually sell, tell me, just like it told me uh, where Daniel was in cell A1, I can go and click on any of the other people and it'll take me to where they're working. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful in terms of um, so there we go. Okay, Daniel's logged back on and I should be able to see now cell S10, go to location, it takes me right there. Um, Daniel, if you wouldn't mind going and creating another sheet for me at the bottom. Sure. sure. And you can go and work in sheet two. And now what you'll see is now I can see on cell sheet two B4. So I can go to location, it'll take me to sheet B2. B2. Uh, um, sheet, <laughs> sheet 2 B4 and um, and there he is in A1. He's just typing test. Okay, so this is a great way to work and I think a lot of businesses really like the idea of having content in SharePoint and actually uh, leveraging this kind of co-authoring capability in addition to having it available in a familiar way through Windows Explorer and not just through a website. Um, um, Eric, yes, yeah, go ahead. Uh, if I could just, uh, we've got a question from Arthur. He says, uh, yeah. when are you sharing, when you're sharing a Word document, does the track changes feature work well along with that? Sure, track changes, great, great question. So if I, um, if I open this updated intern list, I will always have the ability in SharePoint to see the version history. So I can look at this version history and I can see where Daniel modified it. So Daniel modified the file three minutes ago and I can go and open his version or I can go to the version, the original version I created just when I shared it at 1536. So this will allow me to track uh, what happened to my document and perhaps if I need to uh, revert back to a previous version or at least, at the very least, copy content from that previous version into the active version that I'm currently working on. Okay, so that's version history. But let's say I also wanted to track changes on here as well. Okay, so this can work alongside with, with track changes as well. So if I have track changes in Word or in Excel, doesn't matter, we can have them both working uh, alongside. Track changes really um, actually works better in SharePoint because what happens is SharePoint ensures that each and every person is working off the same copy of the document. Um, the problem with not using it in SharePoint is we email around this, you email around a copy of a document which with different track changes on them, essentially, because maybe um, Ar um, Arnold, you go and email 
myself and Daniel, the same copy of that document. Well, now I'm going to make changes on it and Daniel's going to make changes on it. We both email the, the document back to you. Well, now you've got my tracked changes on my copy that you sent to me and Daniel's tracked changes on his copy that he sent back to you. Whereas here in SharePoint, because we're all co-authoring on the same document, we're tracking changes for all of us on one single file. And in addition to that, we're furthering the capability by allowing us to actually go back and view previous versions, restore those versions if need be, and actually have sort of a backup and historical track record of what's happened on this document um, and what it used to look like. So um, from a compliance perspective, we could even go look at the past one. Yeah. Uh, we got two other questions. Joe asks um, if you're authoring on a plane or if you are yeah, creating a document on a plane, will it sync back when you have internet, internet, action, internet access again or automatically or do you have to do something to get it syncing? And then I've got one other question. Cool. OK, so um, in terms of working offline, let's go and look at that. So let's say. And I think we lost Eric. He probably disconnected his. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, that was that was a bit. Uh, that was my fault. Um, I should have known better being on the webinar. Um, but what I wanted to do is let's say I go and pause my uh, as an alternative. I go and pause my sync because it effectively does the same thing. So I'm going to go and, and pause um, the syncing capability. Now I go and generate a new file like I'm offline. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, to Word now. And again, I'm just going to go and create this file. I'm going to save it. We go to browse. We save it in the HR documents and we call this um, for review by the board. And we save it. OK, now this document is saved to my PC. Can you see here at the top of Word it's saying save to PC? So immediately it's telling me right at the top of Word or Excel or PowerPoint that this is saved to my PC, but it's not, it's not synced. Okay, so it's just telling me it's saved to my PC. Now I can see what's happening is for review by the board, it's now got a pending. So because I put it in this folder, it is going to synchronize it automatically, but it's currently its status is actually pending. It's, it's waiting for internet access. And immediately when I resume my sync or it gets internet access as a as an example. We will automatically see this then sync back and we'll see it um, listed here. We'll see the word document actually show up here. So let's just wait for that. So there we go. It says processing change now. And there we go. We're seeing for review by the board automatically. I didn't have to do anything. It's been added automatically for me, even if I added that in the plane. Now, Maybe just to further that scenario because it is an important um, it is an important one. If I was working on the plane and let's say somebody else updated the document while I was offline, it's similar to what's happened here. So I went offline and somebody updated this, uh, which I'm sure was you, Daniel. Somebody updated this document while I was off offline. Basically, what that little uh, red X is telling me is it was unable to merge my changes. So there were changes that I made in my document while I, was, while I didn't have internet access, but somebody else made changes to this document as well while I've been um, offline. And so it gives me a choice, um, and now Microsoft has actually changed it. By default, it'll actually, um, well, no, they still give you the choice. It'll ask you whether you want to merge the changes so do you want to take your changes and merge it with the changes that somebody else made it or do you want to replace um, the other person's changes with your own or do you want to discard the other person's changes and over um, uh, or do you want to discard your changes and just use the other person's um, changes to the document so there's those three choices it gives you um, and then that that's how it handles kind of the scenario because there's always that scenario if you're offline and someone else works on it you're always it's always going to have a, a challenge kind of bringing the document back in line but it does handle that quite well because it'll ask you those three questions as to how you want to handle it merge replace it with your changes or discard your changes those are essentially the three choices that you're going to get 
Okay. Great. Hopefully and then just the final the question. question. What happens if, if you're co-authoring a document and you by, one of you by mistake delete it? Uh, can you find the document again? Yes, yes. So let's say I delete all of these documents. Okay. Now in HR documents, if I delete all the HR documents, now it's going to it's going it's going to synchronize those and delete those. So if I go to HR as an example, okay, those those contents. Let's just see here. Um, okay, oh, there we go. Processing seven changes. Okay, there we go. And what we'll see here is those documents are going to be uh, are going to be removed. Now it hasn't removed the application list yet. I think that might be because it's still open. But it's yeah, removed. Now what, now, what happens in that scenario? What if I need to actually recover those and bring those back? Well, that, well, there's always in in every single SharePoint document library, there's a recycle bin online. I can always go back to that recycle bin and bring those, bring that content back. So I can just select the documents that I want to bring back, or I can select all of them, say restore, and you'll see here. And you see when I click restore, almost immediately those documents are back um, where they where they should be. Okay, so that's how I can get them how, they, how I can get them back. You may have noticed that I have different icons next to them now. I've got little cloud icons. What this means is these documents, even though they're visible on my laptop, they're not using up hard drive space. So this document, even though is 189 kilobytes is not using up any of my hard drive at all. It's only when I first open it that it's going to download. Okay, it's going to download this, this content. So we see it's downloading it for me and then now I can work on it. Okay, so if it's in the cloud, it needs to go and fetch it for me. This feature is called files on demand. So we're, going to, we're kind of fetching the file on demand on your behalf. And then you can see there's a little green tick to say, okay, this file now is storing hard drive, it is using up hard drive space. And if you want to free up your hard drive, you can just say free up space and it brings it back to the cloud. It's not deleting. All it's doing is it's deleting the copy that exists on your hard drive, sending it back to the cloud only so that you have your hard drive space freed up. Um, that is an important one to consider because as SharePoint grows, as you have more and more documents that get worked on. You can imagine these can get quite full, right? More and more documents uh, get stored on your on your PC. You don't want them to automatically fill up. So most of them, as other people in your team or your, your department start adding files, they automatically get shown on your PC or your Mac with little cloud icons so they don't use up your space. Um, an additional Windows feature which Microsoft introduced under storage is a storage manager um, for Windows. And if I con uh, con configure storage sense, storage sense looks at your uh, cloud content and says, okay, well, HR, if I haven't, if I, so it's going to make content that I haven't opened for more than, let's say, 60 days. Let's say I've got all HR content, but if I don't touch, if I don't work on a particular document in my HR documents for the last 60 days, well, let's just free up some hard drive space and we'll send it back to cloud only. So we'll send it back, it'll become online only. And this is a nice way to actually have Windows automatically control how the online content is managed. Um, and especially for those of us with SSDs like myself, this is a particularly useful feature. Um, and we can set that to 60, 30, 14, I usually set this at 30 days. If I haven't worked on the document in 30 days, well, um, it's not likely that I'm going to need it um, locally stored. I'll go and fetch it from the cloud at a later date then. Okay, so that's something that's, um, I think, a really great addition that Microsoft has included. Okay, any other questions that have come up? Um, Aiden. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I, okay, it's cool. So I've covered your I've covered your question. Fantastic. Thanks so much for that. And thanks so much for the questions. Those are really good ones. Um, they come up very, very often because I think 
Um, these are common scenarios which aren't really protected when it comes to local content stored not in the cloud. So if you think of, you, you consider these scenarios and you're using a file server, none of these scenarios are really, in, in, in a practical sense, really covered. Whereas if they are stored in SharePoint, I would say you can put a tick next to having these capabilities and features. <clears throat> there's, there's obviously a lot more that I could go through. I don't want to inundate you with, in terms of how SharePoint is um, really structured, how the design and the theming and the buttons and all that kind of stuff works. I really wanted to give you a taste of this is how kind of document management works. And if you're really, really interested in to, interested to hear, how can you um, take SharePoint and leverage document management, but not only that, but leverage the site creation and the, and the content um, uh, and bringing all the content together in these sites, please engage with us. Um, let us know and we'd be happy to come in and sit with you and discuss and help you to get your content and information into the cloud by leveraging SharePoint. Great, thank you very much, uh, um, Eric. If there's no other questions from anyone, uh, the, yeah, you've uh, really given, well, uh, you've even showed me a few tricks which I wasn't aware of, so thanks very much. And uh, we look forward to next week when we'll be looking at Microsoft Teams. Absolutely. Great, thanks everyone. Okay, so um, before everyone just r runs, um, so, uh, if we, I just want to quickly, so next week's, uh, sorry. So next week's session, um, episode four, it's on the 30th of May, if you're wondering about the date. And that will really be focusing on teams. And so we're going to be leveraging off the content that we've really uh, looked at in terms of SharePoint today and showing how the SharePoint content can be surfaced within teams because you don't want to split scenario where you've got just you've got um, people working in their teams and working on documents inside teams and then you've got a separate SharePoint journey. That's really not what this is about. So I really want to show you. Um, it's very important for me to show you in two weeks time how Microsoft Teams and SharePoint really bring the content together and how they work together and how they're integrated so that you can work more efficiently as a team using Microsoft Teams and SharePoint. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you then. Great, thanks everyone. Thanks, Eric. Thanks. Thanks, Thank you, Eric. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Eric. 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 Thanks, Eric.